Welcome to A Look Ahead. We're delighted you've decided to join us. We study the Sabbath School lessons as prepared by the Seventh-day Adventist Church, and this particular series is on Christian education. This particular lesson, lesson number five in that series for October 31 of 2020, is entitled, Jesus as the Master Teacher. That should be an interesting lesson. In fact, it really is. We'll see. As usual, we like to begin with a word of prayer. Our wonderful Father, we wish that the Master Teacher could be with us to take charge of our discussion. And in fact, the Holy Spirit is here. We ask him to guide us in all we do and say. Help us to represent you correctly as we think your thoughts and speak your words behind you is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Jim? Billy Graham tells a story of when he visited soldiers at the field hospital in the company of their general. One young soldier was so mangled that he lay face down on a canvas and steel contraption. A doctor whispered to Graham, I doubt he'll ever walk again. The soldier made a request of the general. Sir, I fought for you, but I've never seen you. Could I see your face? So the general got down, slid under that canvas and steel contraption, and talked with the soldier. As Graham watched, a tear fell from the soldier's eye onto the general's cheek. Wow. Mm. Sabbath School Bible Study Guide. How's that for an introduction? Yeah. If you take time to read the first few pages of that most incredible book, The Desire of Ages by Ellen White, you will realize that the condition of mankind just before Jesus came to this earth was very bad. So what did God do? He sent his baby son, Jesus Christ, into a, world, into a world that the devil really, really thought he had just about gotten under his complete control. And it was God's plan that we should behold the face of Jesus Christ. Look at the following verses. I'm reading from he Hebrews chapter 1, 1 to 4. In the past God spoke to our ancestors many times and in many ways through the prophets. But in these last days he has spoken to us through his Son. He is the one through whom God created the universe, the one whom God has chosen to possess all things at the end. He reflects the brightness of God's glory and is the exact likeness of God's own being sustaining the universe with his powerful word. After achieving forgiveness for human sins, he sat down in heaven at the right-hand side of God, the supreme power. The Son was made greater than the angels, just as the name that God gave him is greater than theirs. And that comes from American Bible Society, the Good News Translation, 1992. Okay, well these verses should make it very clear to anyone who understands them that Jesus Christ was not just born as an ordinary human being, although some would try to claim that that's true. The creator of the universe, the king of all kings, the ruler of angels, chose to become a helpless baby boy on this earth. Why would he do that? He had one great purpose, to teach us the truth about his father. Amazing idea. As sinful human beings, we could not behold the face of God without being destroyed. You remember what God said to Moses. But God chose to solve the problem by sending Jesus as the, the express image of his person, we just read that, or the exact imprint of God's very being from the NRSV. So if we want to know what God is like, we must intensely study the example of Jesus. Had God the Father come to our world and dwelt among us, humbling himself, veiling his glory, that humanity might look upon him, the history that we have of the life of Christ would not have been changed. Can we interrupt there for a second? Think about that. In other words, we're saying that the Son and the Father are identical twins almost. So that if he had come instead of the Son, it would not have made any difference. Uh, who was it said? Thomas says, show us the Father. Mm -hmm. I think it was Thomas, right? Yeah. Oh, Philip. 
Oh, Philip. it was Philip, right? Was yeah, it was Philip. Yeah. Yeah. In every act of Jesus, in every lesson of his instruction, we are to see and hear and recognize God. Inside of hearing, in effect, it is the voice and movements of the Father, Ellen White, that I may know him, page 338, uh, verse 4. Um, by coming to dwell with us, Jesus was to reveal God both of men and of angels, and to angels. I'm going to interrupt there again a little bit. Think about this. God is saying, I can teach the angels something about myself by sending my son down here to dwell among human beings. Because things had to be reconciled mm -hmm. in heaven. Yep. Yeah. Not alone, for his earthbound children was this revelation given. Our little world is the lesson book of the universe. God's wonderful purpose of grace, the mystery of redeeming love, is the theme into which angels desire to look. First Peter 2, 1 verse 12. And it will be their study throughout endless ages. Ellen White, Desire of Ages, page 19, paragraph 2. Through all these evidences have been given, though all these evidences have been given, the enemy of good blinded the minds of men so that they looked upon God with fear. They thought of him as severe and unforgiving. Satan led men to conceive of God as a being whose chief attribute is stern justice, one who is a severe judge a harsh, exacting creditor. He pictured the Creator as a being who is watching with jealous eyes to discern the errors and mistakes of men, that he may visit judgments upon them. It was to remove this dark shadow by revealing to the world the infinite love of God. Jesus came to live among men. Ellen White steps to Christ Page 10, verse, or chap, uh, paragraph Verses 3. 10 and, I mean, pages 10 and 11. And 11, right. Wow. Think yes. about that. So what were we as human beings supposed to learn from the life and death of Jesus? Well, we don't have time to go and read it all, but if you read 2 Corinthians 4, 1 to 6, and these verses, Paul made it very clear, clear that Christ, in one of several places in the Scriptures, Christ was the very, the exact likeness of God. The exact likeness of God. Well, it's John 14, 9, Jesus yeah. says, you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Right, exactly. You want to know what the Father is like? Yeah. Yeah. And then, yeah. We do not know exactly how Paul studied the life of Christ. I mean, think about it, he never met him, except in vision. Following his experience on the Damascus Road, he went out into the Arabian Desert and spent years thinking through the issues. He probably had memorized much of the Old Testament in Hebrew. Try to imagine that one. The New Testament had not yet been written, but a short time later, ministering to the converts in Corinth, he wrote, 1 Corinthians 11, 1, imitate me then, just as I imitate, imitate mm. Christ. Just a little sideline. Would line. we dare to say that? Just a little sideline, you know, here Paul spent years in Arabia, in the desert. I think in the Old Testament, was it Moses uh, who spent years in there too? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, in yes. Arabia. Yeah. 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 Just, probably the same area. Probably you, you the same area. Yeah. Similar. Arabia. Um, Could it be possible for someone in our day to make such a statement? Imitate me as I am, take Christ? <laughs> On several occasions, God has used light to dispel darkness. With the birth of Jesus, he chose to send his Son to accurately reflect the light of his own image. And incredibly as, incredible as it may seem, he has asked us to be, quote, imitators of God as dear children, Ephesians 5.1. So what does that mean? It is growth and knowledge of the character of Christ that sanctifies the soul. To discern and appreciate the wonderful works of, uh, work of the atonement transforms him who contemplates the plan of salvation. 
by beholding Christ, he becomes changed into the same image from glory to glory as by the Spirit of the Lord, 2 Corinthians 3.18. The beholding of Jesus becomes, we, we, in other words, we spend our time focusing on him, thinking about him, thinking about his life, what happened, why he died, etc. Becomes what? An ennobling, refining process to the actual Christian. He sees the pattern and grows into its likeness, and then how easily are dissensions, emulations, and strife adjusted. The perfection of Christ's character is the Christian's inspiration. When we see him as he is, desire awakes to be like him, and this elevates the whole man, for every man that hath this hope in him purifies himself even as he is pure. Ellen White, Advent Review and Sabbath Herald, August 26, 1890. The reason why it seems so difficult to win souls for Christ is that Satan is continually engaged in misrepresenting the character of God to the human mind. So let's be very clear. The great controversy is not just a battle between the good and evil. It's not just a, some of amorphous forces, good versus evil. No. What we're talking about here is Satan's attempts to misrepresent God in every possible way and to smear his character. And by contrast, God has to try to tell the truth about himself. That is, that is the core issue in the great controversy. So, she goes on to say, Christ came to reveal the Father to the world in his true character, that the false conceptions which men entertained of the divine character might be swept away. Abedez, Review and Sabbath Herald, May 31, 1892. She wrote those words as she was working on Desire of Ages. John also had some very stirring and potent words to say about Jesus. Jim? John 1, 1 to 18. In the beginning, the Word already existed. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. From the very beginning, the Word was with God. Through Him, God made all things. Not one thing in all creation was made without Him. The Word was the source of life, and this life brought light to humanity. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has never put it out. God sent his messenger, a man named John, who came to tell people about the light, so that he should see and that all the, should. excuse me, so that all should see and hear excuse me, so that all should hear the message and believe. He himself was not light, he came to tell about the light. This was the real light, the light that comes into the world and shines on everyone. The Word was in the world, and though God made the world through him, yet the world did not recognize him. He came to his own country, but his own people did not receive him. Some, however, did receive him and believed in him, so he gave them the right to become God's children. They did not become God's children by natural means, that is, by being born as the children of a human father. God himself was their father. The Word became a human being and full of grace and truth, lived among us. We saw his glory, the glory which he received as the Father's only Son. John spoke about him. He cried out, This is the one I was talking about when I said, He comes after me. But he is greater than I am, because he existed before I was born. Out of the fullness of his Would grace... Would you say, a little while before I was born? <laughs> Christ, he was Christ. greater than I, because he existed before I was born. Hey John, that's John the Baptist speaking. Yeah, John the I'm Baptist saying, speaking. Yeah. How, how long did Jesus exist before John the Baptist was born? <laughs> we have no record on that one, do we? But he could say that uh, I am, yeah. <laughs> which gave the the religious, pious frauds, the, the priests, uh, yeah. apoplexy, I guess. Exactly. Out of the fullness of his grace, he has blessed us all, giving us one blessing after another. God gave the law through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, the only Son who is the same as the Father and is at the Father's side. He has made him known. Wow. So we, we saw some incredible verses there, but some very, one very sad verse. 
he came to his own people, he came to his own nation, and his own people did not accept Didn't recognize him. him. Didn't recognize him. Yes. And, wow. And how was he going to be? It wasn't, remember, what was it in Isaiah? He, people didn't, wasn't impressed with his looks, no. No. but the message that he had yeah. was not palatable to them because their presupposition. Yep. Um, through Moses came the law. Mm hmm through Jesus came truth and, uh, and grace. Mm -hmm. So was believing in a creator a little tougher in the Old Testament? Uh, or, or they were closer to creation than we are. <laughs> Good question. Yeah, I mean, um, I mean, w w would it, was it easier? Is it easier for us to believe Mm -hmm. than the folk in the Old Testament. Uh, Maybe. Good question. No, that would not be so just or <laughs> fair. I mean, how do you put this thing together? Um, yeah. No, really, um, I believe that it would, would not be any different whether, whether I was alive in the Old Testament or New Testament times. So why was it necessary for Christ to come to correctly represent the Father? Carrie? The light appeared when the world's darkness was deepest. There was but one hope for the human race, that the knowledge of God might be restored to the world. Christ came to restore this knowledge. He came to set aside the false teaching by which those who claimed to know God had misrepresented, misrepresented rather him. He came to manifest the nature of his law to reveal in his own character the beauty of holiness. And that's okay. Mrs. White's book, Education. I want you to notice a, a couple of points there. He, he came to, to correct those who had misrepresented him. He came to manifest the nature of his law. What's the relationship between misrepresenting God and clearly understanding or correctly understanding the nature of his law? God's law is the transcript of his character, right? Yep. Everything Jesus That's did... That's his glory also. Yeah, yeah. Is, is the truth about him is his uh, glory. Yeah. Everything Jesus did in his life on earth had a single purpose. The revelation of God for the uplifting of humanity. Education, page 82. And I will say this now, but we'll say it again later. Think of all the people who think that Jesus came to this world only for one purpose, so he could die and pay the price for our sins. That's pagan. That was a well, we would have to explain that, but it's true. Well, but it's, it's <laughs> you know. Yeah. But it's, uh, perhaps it's a byproduct. Mm -hmm. Of a mis uh, misapprehension of the way God operates. Yeah. Uh, right. Well, he did not come. He came here to express uh, the Heavenly Father, the yeah, character of right. And uh, the salvation came as a byproduct. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. What well, is well, then the salvation is healing. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. yeah. If, 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 what needs to, is, is there, if I have pancreatic cancer, is that what I need healing for that? No, I need to have healed the way I think. Yeah. We're going to talk more about that, so hang on, but you're right. What is amazing is that despite spending night and day with his group of disciples for up to three and a half years with some of them, some of them didn't join until later, but some of them had spent three and a half years with him, and it's possible that James and John were his cousins, so they might have known him even earlier. Philip still said to him, Lord, show us the Father, that's all we need. John 14, 8. And he no. probably shook his head the way you're... No saying. doubt Jesus answered with a pained voice. For a long time I have been with you all, yet you do not know me, Philip. Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. Now, he must have said that to them multiple times before that, before, before this last night. This is, this is in the upper room on the last night. And that was a conversation that took place in the upper room the night before he was crucified. We now live almost 2,000 years later and have the advantage of having the New Testament and the writings of Ellen White to assist us. Do we still need the Holy Spirit to show us the Father? 
How many Seventh-day Adventists correctly and fully understand the issues in the Great Controversy, including how to correctly interpret the, three angels the third angel's message? Sadly, a minority. A small uh, minority. Ellen White, uh, a beautiful text that we uh, memorized in college, she says, it would be well for us to spend a thoughtful hour each day in contemplating the life of Jesus Christ. Yeah. How beautiful. Uh, Desire of Ages 58, I think it is. It would make a big, I don't remember, but then I, it would make a big difference yeah. in, uh, in our yeah, lives. Absolutely. If we, if we could, says, to know God is to love him, she says. So if we got a clearer picture of him, we should love him more, right? I mean, isn't that the message here? Okay. <laughs> Philippians 2, uh, 1 through 11, oh, some of the best texts in the Bible. Mm -hmm. uh, your life in Christ makes you strong, and His love comforts you. You have fellowship with the Spirit, um, and you have kindness and compassion for one another. I so urge you. Good. Yeah, go ahead. I'm just saying, what's he, he's starting off here by saying, okay, you are, you are a great group of people there in Philippi. He said that to them a number of times. He complimented them in several ways. They, they were very generous in supporting him and so forth like this. But he's saying, okay, now you're good, but... But I urge let's make, you... Let's make it better. Yeah, but I urge you then to make me completely happy by having the same thoughts, sharing the same love, and being one in soul and mind. Don't do anything from selfish ambition or from a cheap desire to boast, huh? but be humble towards one another, always considering others better than yourselves, and look out for one another's interests, not just for your own. This attitude you should have is the attitude, the attitude you should have is the attitude, I, sorry, the attitude you should have is the one that Christ Jesus had. Yeah. The attitude Amazing. you should have is the one Christ Jesus had. He always had the nature of God, but he did not think that by force he should try to remain equal with God. Instead of this, his own free will, he gave up all he had and took the nature of a servant. He became like a human being and appeared in human likeness. He was humble and walked in the path of obedience all the way to death, his death on the cross. And I'm going to interrupt there for a second. I love that passage, I mean, a translation from the Phillips New Testament where he says, the death of a common criminal. Mm. Because, I mean, that was the very worst thing that the Roman government could do to somebody. Say, you are the, the worst criminal, and he's crucified between two other thieves, meaning he's a worse criminal than they are. Just, just think about that. For this reason, God raised him to the highest place above and gave him the name that is greater than any other name. And so, in honor of the name of Jesus, all beings in heaven all beings in heaven, on earth, and in the world below will fall on their knees. And all who openly proclaim that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Good news Bible. Okay, when it says, all beings in heaven above, on the earth, and in the world below or under the earth, how many does that include? Everyone. Doesn't leave anybody out. We know Including what? Satan? Well, that's what we read, right, in uh, Revelation chapter 22? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, amazing. So, think about this. Christ comes from the very highest position. He goes to the lowest position. And when he goes back up, everybody says, yeah. There's nothing, I mean, it could no not be lower because, yeah. look, the Talmud, the religious book, they, they called his mother a sothard, which is a prostitute, and him a bastard. Yeah. I mean, could not be worse. Yeah. Could not be worse. And he dies the death of a common criminal. A common criminal. Wow. And this is 
The Bible calls this the mystery of godliness mm. in other verses. Notice how this passage deals with Christ's divinity, his incarnation, his humanity, and his acceptance of death on the cross. It is impossible to imagine anyone coming down from Christ's position in heaven and dying the death of a common criminal crucified on a cross. Could anyone lower himself more than that? I mean, from the very top to the very bottom, how could you, how could you lower yourself any more than that? So what can we learn from the life and death of Jesus? Think about his ministry, his miracles, his teachings, and his sermons. 2 Corinthians 5, 16 to 21. No longer do we judge anyone by human standards, even if at, any, at a time we judged Christ according to human standards, we no longer do so. So what is Paul meaning when he says, at one time we judged Christ according to human standards? What's he talking about there, do you think? Can you remember his earlier life? He wanted to kill everybody who followed Christ, right? right. He's a criminal. He's, he's, you know, he's a, a no good. Okay? He said, we used to judge Jesus like that. Anyone who's joined to Christ is a new being. The old is gone, the new has come. All that is done by God through Christ, all this is done by God, who through Christ changed us from enemies into his friends. I mean, think about this changed us from enemies into his friends. But, but the, as long as we're in this life, though, the human nature still tries to raise its ugly head. Mm -hmm. So once we're saved, it doesn't mean that we're always saved. We maintain that yes. being saved. And he gives us a task of doing what? Making others his friends also. Our message is... God was making the whole human race his friends through Christ. God did not keep an account of their sins, and he has given us the message which tells how he makes them his friends. Here we are then, speaking for Christ, as though God himself were making his appeal through us. We plead on Christ's behalf, let God change you from enemies into his friends. Christ was without sin, but for our sake, God made him share our sin in order that in union with him we might share the righteousness of God. Mm -hmm. I have uh, often said in, in, this, in this group as well that uh, the life and death of Christ give us a choice. We can live as closely as, po close as possible like his life or we will die his death. He didn't die of crucifixion. He didn't die of burning. He's not going to be thrown into hell, none of that kind of stuff. He died of separation from his father. So we can choose. Do we want to live a life separated from God, or do we want to live a life in association with God? Which will it be? That's, that's our choice. Now, it's not just, oh, I'll choose one time and that's it. It, it requires uh, living the life to follow along with that decision. But that's... So he, 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 he came to be... He came to show us Here's our, our eyes should be wide open. We should say, okay, God, what am I learning from your life? Here's your life. That's the kind of person we need to be if we want to live with you for the rest of eternity in, in, in heaven. Or here's your death. Do we, want to die, do we really want to die like that? That's our choice. If yeah. you back up a little bit, Ken, uh, it says, uh, verse 19, our message is that God was making the whole human race his friends through Christ. God did not keep an account of their sins. Yeah. We'll put uh, Colossians 2.14 there. That's really, isn't that really what it means? Yeah. Okay. It's not that the law was abolished. Yeah. No, it's the, the and, and you pointed out years ago, when I, and it, I even put a mark in here, it, uh, the book of Tobit yeah. 9.5 is the only place that that word it, is used besides a, it's a Bible that has the, the, the apocrypha word, in it. Yeah. The, mm -hmm. uh, apocrypha in it. Other words, that word, what is that word? Uh, chirographon. Yeah. Okay. Chirographon. That's, that's the only place it is. And God didn't keep a record of your sins, but it doesn't mean the, the law 
is abolished. No, mm -hmm. the law is a description of the way things work, just mm -hmm. like gravity. Yeah. You're not going to abolish gravity. You can't do that. Well, you can't abolish people's... Yeah. Hey, and yeah. I just pointed, I noted that. That's well, what's a, the text? Uh, Col uh, Colossians 2.14. Oh, it talks about the handwriting of the ordinances, remember? Yes. That, that's a, just a bum translation. Kerographon yeah, is a handwriting. Yeah. And that's really what Paul is, here it is, Paul saying that in Colossians 2.14, and he says, that's saying that there, right? What is that, yeah. oh, that's, what, what was that text there? Do we this just, one is, is, uh, is uh, here, where are we here? We're on, we're on 2 Corinthians, Corinthians 5, okay. verse 19, yeah, yeah. exactly. Wow, mm, amazing stuff. Well, speak, he asks us to speak on his behalf. Imagine the incredible suggestions being made in these verses. And compare John 15, 15, Jim. John 15, 15, I do not call you slaves any longer because slaves do not know what their master is doing. Because I call you friends, because I have told you everything I have heard from my father. Now, what Jesus is doing is, is uh, he's teaching. Yeah. It, it came as a teacher and not a penalty payer. Yeah. And I, the reason I use the term slaves, that's really what yeah. the, 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 it comes from, is from yeah. the Greek is slaves. Zulos, yeah. 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 So imagine that. God comes down from the very highest position in heaven all the way down to our level. He says, now I want to be your friend. I want, in fact, I want, I want to, to give you the power to make others your friends. Um, God has reached down from the very throne room of heaven to reconcile us. He wants us to be his friends. The human race has run away from him just about as far as we can go. But God is constantly pursuing us, asking us to come back. Are we going to respond? What does God plan to accomplish by his incredible humiliation? Kerry? I'm reading from Colossians chapter 1, verses 15 through 20. Christ is a visible likeness of the invisible God. He is the firstborn Son, superior to all created things. For through him God created everything in heaven and on earth, the seen and the unseen things, including spiritual powers, lords, rulers, and authorities. God created the whole universe through him and for him. Christ existed before all things, and in union with him all things have their proper place. He is the head of his body, the church. He is the source of the body's life. He is the firstborn son. Who... Now I'm going I'm to interrupt there for a second. The firstborn son, what does that mean? Hey, I'm, I, that's not fair for me to ask you that because you need to read the, the, the Greek to understand that. Prototopos, it says here, which means, it really means the, uh, the, there's the only one of a kind. It's, it, we, we say firstborn. It can be, right. Or, so, or the John 3, 16, only begotten. Yeah. But it's, it's, Still, a unique, story. It's, it's a unique it, one. It really means, one. really means one of a kind. There's no, no, no one else like this. So this is not, okay, what happens to be worn by from a woman. Uh, it was true, but that's not what made him unique. We, all of us here, have been born from women. This is not just a firstborn son. This is a unique, absolutely first class, I don't know, you know, altogether different son, okay? So, so what you're saying is the translation was not quite as accurate as it might have been. Well, I mean, what, what word are you going to put in there? I don't know. Unique, the, maybe? The way we speak English now, it sounds like there's another son since. Yeah, exactly. Well, how about one of his kind? I mean, he, yeah. uh, he's unlike anyone else. Yeah. Um, yeah. When we look at Philippians chapter 2, verse 2, two now, right there, it, uh, yeah. um, so beautifully put together. Anyway, yeah. anyway we'll get, Pick it up again. He is the firstborn son who was raised from death in order that he alone might have the first place in all things. For it was by God's own decision that the son has in himself the full nature of God. Now, let me interrupt there again. I'm sorry, but we right. this is so important. I want to say it. Jesus always was God. 
So the Godhead together, meeting up in heaven, decided this is the way they're going to deal with the sin problem. Right? This is the way they're going to deal with the, the sin problem. He, he doesn't give up his divinity. He comes down to this earth as a baby boy and lives that life. Uh, and this is what he had chosen to do. Okay, go ahead. Uh, through the sun then. Okay. Oh, okay. I was temporarily lost. I thought it uh, might have missed out a line. Through the sun then, God decided to bring the whole universe back to himself. How much? I'm sorry. I got to keep interrupting here. How, who is he bringing back to himself? The whole universe. The whole universe. This is what we talk. We're talking about the larger view, the great controversy. So many people, some people think it's just an, a, a battle between good and bad. And other people say, well, maybe it's a, a battle between Jesus and Satan. No, this is a, this is a universe-wide issue that needs to be resolved. Sorry, I got carried away. God made peace through his son's blood on the cross and so brought back to himself all things both on earth and in heaven. That's from okay, one more Bible. thing. So how does his death on the cross resolve issues in the universe? Well, reconciliation needed to take place in heaven itself. Among angels who yeah. doubted. Yes. Yep. Okay, you're going to read now some most amazing words. Go ahead. The law of Jehovah was burned with needless exactions and traditions, and God was represented as severe, exacting, revengeful, and arbitrary. He was pictured as one who could take pleasure in the sufferings of his creatures, the very attributes that belong okay. to the character Would you of give Satan. me a minute here? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, for the 70 or 80, 90, 100 years of life, sinful life, this God, he will fry someone throughout eternity? Yeah. Aren't we doing it right now exactly yep. the same way yep. most of Christianity? Yes. What kind of, I've, I've talked with, I still, we, I'm sure we do, talk with some of these bewildered, bewildered Christian friends. I, say, I cannot picture God yes. frying people for so long. Thank you for sharing this. You know what I mean? yes. uh, but they are bewildered. They think about how could a loving God do this throughout eternity? Well, he roasts them and toasts them yeah, on the really. spit in the sky by and by. There you are. <laughs> right, right. That's Richard Neese. <laughs> <laughs> roast them and toast them on the spit in the sky by and by. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you got a you picture know, of it. What a bad representation of a loving God. Yeah. I'm going to go back over. I think this needs repeating. The very attributes that belong to the character of Satan, yeah. the evil one represented as belonging to the character of God. Exactly. Jesus came to teach men of the Father to correctly represent him before the fallen children of earth. Angels could not fully portray the character of God, but Christ, who was a living impersonation of God, could not fail to accomplish the work. The only way in which he could set and keep men right was to make himself visible and familiar to their eyes. Now I want you to I want you to think about those words. The only way he does he doesn't save us by paying the penalty. He's the only way in which he could set that means justify and keep sanctify right. men right. was to make himself visible and familiar to their eyes. In other words. God's solution to the sin problems is to reveal the truth about his character. And, and earlier on, we, we had uh, John uh, 1.18, yeah. and then you could add John 6.46. No one has seen the Father except yeah. for the one that came from the Father. Yeah. And here we say it was Jesus was the representative, what the finite representative uh, infinite. of the one infinite creator God. Yeah. He, he could, it's the only way you can do it. Because the infinite one, we can't see the infinite. Yeah. You'll never see the infinite. Yeah. You will see the sun. You've got a great passage here, Carrie. Yeah. Carry on. <laughs> Christ exalted the character of God, attributing to him the praise and giving to him the credit of the whole purpose of his own mission on earth. Okay, I'm going to interrupt again. <laughs> we said... The only way he could set and keep men right, now she says the whole purpose of his own mission on earth is to do what? Set men right through the revelation of God. To set men right through the revelation of God. 
if if we are not if we're not seeing a better picture of God, if we're not getting a clear, better, more complete picture of God, his mission is, is was a waste for us. Go ahead. In Christ was erased before men the paternal grace and the matchless perfections of the Father. In his prayer just before his crucifixion, he declared, I have manifested thy name, I have glorified thee on earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. When the object of his mission was attained, the revelation of God to the world. Okay, I'm going to interrupt again. I mean, how, how clear could she make it? Yes. I mean, here's the third time. What's the object of his mission? Not to pay a penalty, not to do a whole bunch of other things people have talked about, mm. to reveal the truth about God to the world. Mm. Okay, I'm sorry, go ahead. And this is John 17, 1 to 4. Yeah. Mm. And, and mostly verses 3 and 4. We'll All get right. to that. Go ahead. The Son of God announced that his work was accomplished and that the character of the Father was made manifest to men. That yeah. comes from Ellen White's Signs of the Times in 1890. Compare and contrast. Distance. You don't need to read all those. Oh, There's a bunch of other places. Yeah. But unfortunately, some of them are contrasting because uh, it's not. This is maybe the clearest place in all of her writings where he, he, she really nails this point down. You know, three or four times in a row. Make God manifest. Make God. In fact, this article is entitled "Christ Made Manifest." I mean, God made manifest in Christ. The whole article. Fantastic. Well, and back up here it says when, uh, when the object of his mission was attained. So note here, Jesus is praying this, mm -hmm. John seventeen three. Mm -hmm. I have accomplished the work. You, mm -hmm. Well, eternal life is to know the Father and Jesus right. Christ, whom thou hast sent. Right. I have accomplished the work you gave me to do. Right. I have made known your character, and he hasn't died. Yeah, that's right. And uh, his work was accomplished. That was his mission. Right. Right. Yeah. God's plan was to speak volumes of truths to the entire universe. In the core message, and we read earlier, even the angels are going to spend the rest of eternity talking about the plan of salvation. God's plan was to speak volumes of truths to the entire universe. In the core message, that plan was for Jesus Christ to reveal the truth about his Father. That was the whole purpose of his own mission on this earth. We just read it. So why do many who call themselves Christians believe that Jesus came only to die and pay the price for our sins? Jesus actually came for something so much bigger than that. Well, we can never match the cosmic scale of the master teacher's work as a reconciler. We are invited to participate in the ministry of reconciliation in our own sphere, and that's Second uh, Corinthians five eighteen. I'm going to read it. All this is done by God, who through Christ changed us. That's what we're talking about a reconciliation. God changed us through the Son from enemies into His friends, and gave us the task of making others His friends also. Wow! I just have to insert a little. Uh, Christians say He came to pay the price, right? Yeah. Uh, because we broke the law. But at the, at the cross, the law has been done over with, so they didn't need to pay the price anymore. I mean, this so yeah. the makes no sense. Logic, logic is, has but gaps in it. It's 99% pro probably percent of Christians believe that. Yeah. How could it happen? But anyway. Well, they get off to talking about too many other things that are extraneous uh, that ha have nothing to do with the character of, of God. They, in fact, we, t they talk about the, we talk about the character. We're just talking right past them because they don't know where, where we're coming from. Yeah. Who has any questions about the character of God? I mean, he's a, guy, he's a good guy. And he paid the okay. penalty. Why, why are you worried about it? And, and, and those that are uh, predestined, why, why do you bother to, to share, the, quotes, the good news? And it's all, it's all predetermined. What do you need to worry about it for? Well, could this be what was in Jesus' mind when he prayed, quote, as you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world, John 17, 18, in the New King James Version. What is incredible is that just being born as a baby boy was a witness to a few individuals who never forgot. Mm. We know about Joseph and Mary. Angel appeared to them. The shepherds watching the flocks around Bethlehem. We know about them. And the wise men who came from the east. 
But consider this. <coughs> this is just incredible information. An angel visits the earth to see who was prepared to welcome Jesus. But he can discern no token of expectancy. He hears no voice of praise and triumph that the period of Messiah's coming is at hand. The angel hovers for a time over the chosen city, Jerusalem, and the temple where the divine presence was manifested for ages. But even here is the same indifference. The priests in their pomp and pride are offering polluted sacrifices in the temple. The Pharisees are with loud voices addressing the people or making boastful prayers at the corners of the mm. streets. There is no evidence that Christ is expected and no preparation for the Prince of Life. In amazement, the celestial messenger is about to return to heaven with the shameful tidings. Can you imagine it? Really. <laughs> <laughs> Just imagine it. God said, this is probably Gabriel. He was the leader of the angels. Now that Lucifer is gone, right? right? And God says, okay, take your angels down there and sing for somebody who's, 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 who's trying to, who's ready for the coming of the Christ, the Messiah. And he comes down to Jerusalem and he's <laughs> blinking his eyes. And, <laughs> could this be true? And uh, right, the angels perhaps is Gabriel. So he does not know everything. No. He does not know. So he's about to take off. Uh, and, then, and then says this, when he discovers a group of shepherds who are watching their flocks by night and as they gaze into the starry heavens are contemplating the prophecy of the Messiah to come to earth and longing for the advent of the world's Redeemer. Here is a company that can be trusted with the heavenly message. And suddenly the angel of the Lord appeared declaring the good news, the good tidings of great joy, celestial glory, flooding, flooded all the plain, and innumerable company of angels were revealed. Now, I'm mm -hmm. going to interrupt for wow. just a second again. There's one way we can know for sure when the true Messiah comes again. What's the one criteria that cannot be duplicated by Satan? No matter how how many false Christs he sends, or how even himself tries to come and do it, he can't duplicate this. So what is it that, what do you have to do if you're not sure, is this the real Christ, is not the real Christ, what do you have to do? He will not touch the earth. Well, well that's, not the, that's not the secret. You look up, All the, if the entire I, sky I, is not like, full of bright shining angels, it's not the right man the right God, the right Christ. Christ. When the real Christ comes, the and, and so I'm thinking about it here, an innumerable number of angels. I mean, those guys must have been, those shepherds must have been blinded. And the light, yes, yeah. light all over. All wow. the fields were filled with light. Yes, a multitude of voices broke forth in the anthem, which all the nations of the, uh, of the saved shall one day sing, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Helen White, Spirit of Prophecy, Volume 4, page 198 to 199. This lesson has some amazing, amazing yes. passages in here. Yes. Try to, and I should say that uh, if you want these things to talk about in your Sabbath school class, if you're a Sabbath school teacher, or even if you're not, our handouts are available on, on our website at www.theox, that's theox, T-H-E-O-X dot O-R-G. Uh, there's plenty to talk about here. Try to imagine yourself there that night, watching the sheep on the hills of Bethlehem when the angels appeared to those shepherds. And here's the story. There were some shepherds in that part of the country who were spending the night in the fields taking care of their flocks. I mean, that's what shepherds do. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone over them. They were terribly afraid. But the angel said to them, Don't be afraid. I am here with good news for you, which will bring, you great, will bring great joy to all the people. I mean, you're here in, the, in a black night. You're watching a bunch of quiet sheep who are probably sleeping. And all of a sudden, whoo! Yeah. You know, the entire sky is full of bright shining angels. You're, whoa, what happened? I mean, you can imagine. Um, well... 
Don't be afraid. I'm here with good news for you, which will bring great joy to all the people. This very day, in David's town, your Savior was born, Christ the Lord. And this is what will prove it to you. You will find a baby wrapped in strips of cloth and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great army of heaven's angels appeared with the angels, singing praises to God. Glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them back into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's, let, let, I can just see him, let's, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and saw the baby lying in the manger. When the shepherds saw him, they told them what the angel had said about the child. All who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said. Mary remembered all these things and thought deeply about them. The shepherds went back singing praises to God for all they had heard and seen. It has been just, it had been just as the angel had told them. Good news Bible. Suppose you had been one of those angels sent by God either to Mary or to Joseph or the wise men or even to sing on the hills of Bethlehem. Considering what we now know about the status of the human race at that point in time, what would you have thought your chances were for making an impression? We do not know if Mary had a midwife to help her deliver her baby. We do not know how long her labor lasted. We only know that the baby was laid in a manger, which was probably made of wood or stone, a feeding trough for animals. What did the angels think when they saw it? What did the angels think when they saw it? The creator of our universe, which is so large we cannot even begin to grasp it, condensed himself into the body of a baby boy. This series of lessons about, is about Christian education. Think of the waste it would be, no matter how thorough your education was, if you did not know about this most important story in the history of our universe. I mean, this baby split history in half, B.C., A.D. You know that. Do we recognize what the Father in Heaven is like because of the witness of Jesus? Or, or was his coming, his entire coming, a waste on our, for our, uh, as far as we're concerned? Is, he, is his witness convincing? And if we recognize that we have fallen short of God's ideal for us and we are not representing him correctly, are we prepared to ask forgiveness and keep moving forward? We are told that one day God will show us the events of the great controversy in 3D living color, just like we were actually there. You can read about that in Great Controversy, page 666. You should be able to remember that number and following. Are you excited about the possibility of seeing for yourself what actually happened in all these stories? Are you witnessing to the truth about God every day and whatever your profession or calling? Who was Jesus of Nazareth? Well, your answer should depend upon the background of the person to whom you're speaking. To a child dying of cancer in the hospital, the message should be very simple and straightforward. Jesus loves you. He is your friend. But to someone with some theological training and seeking a deeper understanding of the truth, are you prepared to tell him or her the truth about God's character? Well, passing the torch is an English idiom taken from a race in which each runner passes the torch or baton to the runner who is succeeding him in the race. We should have been doing that a few months ago in preparation for the Tokyo Olympics, right? Yes. They got canceled. Remember that they start out from Athens and someone runs, that, that torch goes all over the world in different places and someone finally, you know, climbs up there and sets the light up. Well, we're going to have to wait till next year. Or is it two years? I don't know. Anyway. Well, in this lesson, we have seen that God passed the torch to his son, Jesus Christ. And we see the following in Jesus. Jim? He, that is Jesus, is the radiance of the glory of God. He was one, three. Jesus is the exact imprint of his, that is God's, nature. Hebrews 1, 3 in the ESV. The glory of Christ, who is the image of God, 2 Corinthians 4, 4 of the ESV. Are we getting a message here? The light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ, 2 Corinthians 4, 6 in the ESV. Whoever has seen me, that is Jesus, 
has seen the Father, John 14, 9, the wow. ESV. That's English Standard Version. Yeah. So Jesus came. He perfectly represented, as, as far as possible, he perfectly represented his Father. And it was sufficient. Yes. It wasn't that it was absolutely, you say, well, I, I need a little bit more. He didn't no. quite do it. No, everything you need was there. Yeah. And now he's taken that torch, and what is he doing yet with it? He's handing it to you. And what are you doing with it? Now it is time for that torch or baton to be passed from Jesus to us. Will we do the job of witnessing to the world so the history of evil can be wrapped up and concluded? When people see us, they wonder how we got to be so wonderful and kind and loving like Jesus. Jesus has not left us to flounder around trying to accomplish this task by ourselves. The Holy Spirit has been sent to help us in every way he can. Could we possibly ask for a better associate in this task? There are many verses in the Bible suggesting that while Jesus was the express image of God, we also were or are to be made in God's image. Are we prepared to pick up the baton, a torch, and carry it forward? The Greek word character originally was used to describe an engraving tool. Later it came to include the mark made by such a tool. Often these tools were used to impress the image of an important ruler on a coin. Remember Jesus' words after showing them a coin, render therefore unto Caesar's what is Caesar's and unto God, of course, what is God's. Now that 2,000 years have passed, God is waiting to gather coins that have been impressed with his character. Carrie? Speaking like a Christian, attending church like a Christian, explicating doctrines like a Christian, and calling oneself a Christian are never replacements for actually being a Christian. There is no population that understands this difference better than our children, who are watching every move their parents, their teachers, and their religious leaders make. They, they may not be able to articulate it, but they are either consciously or unconsciously evaluating Adventist education based on however, how rather Adventists live. This is the bottom line. This is why bearing the image of God in our daily lives is non-negotiable if we want to see Adventist education succeed. And that came from the Sabbath School Bible Study Guide. Behold Jesus every day. Let's pray. Our kind and wonderful Father, what a privilege it is that we have to absorb all this information and try to make it a part of our lives. You did a perfect example in a very, very difficult situation, all the way to the death on the cross, death of a common criminal, crucified as a treason to the Roman, as a, as a traitor to the Roman government. And Lord, we haven't even begun to experience the, the, the difficult things that are going to face us at the end of this world's history, but we know it's coming. May it come soon is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.